I said you closed the church to open up the church. See, we thought the church was brick and mortar. But the church is in us. Yes, yes. Tell somebody, you are the church. You are the church. And the revival that needs to take place uh, must take place in the real church. That, that, that's why the times are, are like they are because the revival is taking place in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But the revival is missing the church. Yeah. That's why people can come into the local building. Yes. And they can sing praises and not be changed because the revival is not taking place in the church. I understand why David said it this way. He said, create in me a clean heart. I'm preaching already. He said, and renew in me. Me. Not the bill. Tell somebody it's got to take place in you. It's got to take place in you. Uh, uh, the, the, the change of mind, uh, it, you don't need to worry about it going on in me, but the change of mind you need is in you. Yes. The change of mind that I need to worry about is in me. Yes, yes. My, my, my. So I say, God, as I was writing the last couple of days, I said, give me wisdom to make the necessary change. So I can remain relevant. Yeah. I don't just want to be a social gatherer. But I want to be relevant to social issues, spiritual issues, marital issues, financial issues. I said, God, make me an asset. Yeah. So that people will see you through what you have given me. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. So the whole church scene has to be restructured. Yes, sir. It might still be some, but there ain't gonna be too many five, six thousand member churches anymore. But what you're going to find is people hear from the voice of God. Come on. You're going to find 50, 75, 100 that is tuned to the will of God. Yes. That is just as effective as a church full of folks. But we have to allow the word of God to transform our lives. We need a word. The word is not absent in this day and time. It's we have selective hearing. Uh, we have the world speaking to us louder than the voice of God. And so there must be a change in the way we do things. Yes. 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 So I ask God to open my eyes. Help me not to see my children, but help me to see the issues. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, that, that need the hand of the Lord's touch. Help me not to see people's problems. But help me to look through them to see the issues. All it is, we need God to open our eyes. Yes, yes, yes. So that we can see His glory. Yes, thank you. Yes. And when we can see his glory, yeah, yeah. when we invite his glory in, right. Right. he begins to 
to heal those brokenness. He began to expose those places we don't want him to have access to. But that's where the church gotta be honest. Brick and mortar can't talk. But this church can be honest. God, I made some mistakes. But you promised me that, that my mistakes wouldn't destroy my future as long as I gave you access to the church. So we got to go back to some good old fashioned teaching. Don't worry about the church in the out. It's already empty. All you can do now is feed. Because we doing it God's way. So when we put the word of God in the church, because the word are getting those crevices of our heart. And it'll speak to those things that's out of line. Every message that has been preached from this pulpit has been to challenge us. It can't end this way. Your life cannot be a total disaster. I haven't sat under this type of preaching. But it's only that we receive the word of God through whatever vessel is being used to preach the word. But God want to open up our mind. Just for a few minutes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes. I want to see you. Yes, Lord. I want to
deal with facing the fears in this pandemic? The enemy has come to spoon many people during this pandemic. We have more churches closing down. We have more people walking away from God. And it's because of the spirit of fear. And we need the Lord to open our eyes so that we can see. The word of the Lord is coming from the book of Exodus. I'll just stay right there. The book of Exodus, the 14th chapter. I want to deal with verses 14 through 16. I might deal with more of the chapter, but just for the sake of time, I just want to read verses 14 through 16. And it reads, The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. I believe I said it again. The Lord shall fight for you. And you should hold your peace. Verse number 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cryest thou unto me? unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Oh! 
Your peace. And the Lord shall fight. I'm trying to encourage somebody. Difficult 
decision. He chose the firing squad. Moments later, shots rained out confirming the execution. The general turned to his aside kick and said, uh, they always prefer the knownly. Somebody didn't catch that later. He said they always prefer the knownly to the unknown. Uh, it is the characteristic of people to be afraid of the undefined. Yet we gave him a choice. The A said, uh, what lies beyond the big black door? Freedom, replied the general. He said, I only knew of a very few who were brave enough to take it. I want to know today, how brave are you? How brave are you to deal with the unknown? That's what this pandemic has done. It, uh, it crept in. It stayed in. And it has caused people to operate in the unknown. Uh, which causes a certain level of fear. Uh, you walk into places and you stand there and you're wondering who next to me got the corona. Yeah. I try to be cautious because I have allergies. I can smell things a mile away. And I get right smack dead in the midst of people. <clears throat> and my cough looks like it get uncontrollable. Until even my beloved Wife. Y'all got some water? You know, she's trying to help me out because it's the fear of the unknown. Yes, sir. Uh, we wondering who talking to us. Uh, don't just forget and walk outside and be like, how you doing? Uh, mm, mm, because it's the fear of the unknown. I wonder if the person that was being executed knew that freedom lies on the other side of the black door. Would he have took it? What could be worse than seven, eight people standing there filling you with bullets? Why not take a chance on the black door? They think about that. You know this way. Warm metal going to fill your body. Wherever they decide to shoot you. But yet you got a big black door. And you won't take a chance, even if it meant saving your life. I'm reminded of a door uh, through scripture that's saying, Behold, I stand at the door yes, yes. and knock.
I've been a sinner for a long time, and uh, it feels good. And I'm kind of too old to change. Uh, but if I change, change to what? Today, God brings us to each one of us today a choice. We can either live uh, by faith or we can live by fear. If we choose fear, we will live our entire life uh, uh, never fully experiencing the great satisfaction of taking a risk on God. If we live our life in fear, we will live our entire life never fully experiencing taking a great risk for God. And on the other hand, if we choose to walk by faith, yeah. we will experience a newfound freedom that will lead us to a personal assurance that we are living life to the fullest. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm ready to live life yeah. to the fullest. Yeah, I'm there, me, be down here 30, 40, 50 years preaching the gospel. Never to live life to its fullest. And I know that some here today are still living by fear. Even though we want to live by faith, we still living by fear. I often uh, get disgusted when I read about the children of Israel in the text that we read today because they seen God move. They seen God cause water to come from a rock. They seen that when they were hungry, God rained down manna from heaven. They seen that when they complained, even though they didn't have a reason to complain, uh, they seen God rain down quail from heaven. Uh, they seen God uh, part the Red Sea. Yeah. And the water divided and they walked through on dry land. But yet uh, they still operated in fear. Uh, the first thing I want to let you know today is that fear is a formula for failure. Tell somebody, fear is a formula. Come on, tell them louder than that. Tell them, fear is a formula for failure. Uh, in a few moments, I want to give you five steps on how to take a risk in faith. Uh -huh. uh, but before I do that, I want to uh, look at an example of people that should have been living by faith, but instead they gave in to fear. Uh, the book of Exodus tells us about the Israelites uh, having been in bondage for over 400 years. Uh, 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 they've seen God miraculously do miracles, but they began to complain after God delivered them from Egypt. After Moses told them, he said, uh, go to all of your labor 
computers and borrow whatever you can. Uh, for those of you that read the story, you'll see that uh, uh, they broke Egypt. God allowed them to come out from bondage uh, after 400 years. You would have thought being on the other side of the gate make them more appreciative. But you see, fear makes us skeptical. Yes. Tell somebody, fear makes you skeptical. Fear makes you skeptical. Uh, uh, then they turned against Moses and complained, why did you bring us out here to die? In the wilderness. Were there not enough graves in Egypt? You can find that in Exodus 14, verse number 11. You see, when we are afraid, we begin to doubt. Yes, sir. Uh, we doubt ourselves. We doubt God. We doubt other people. We become skeptical. Uh, studies have shown that uh, uh, the root has basically uh, been a problem uh, from skepticism is fear. But tell somebody, don't be afraid. God gave you or granted you freedom from that which had you captive. And you walk out and say, well, there are not enough graves in Egypt. Fear makes us selfish. Uh, when we're afraid, the only thing we can think of is myself. Uh, I don't think about you. I don't think about God. I don't think about anybody else. I'm totally focusing on me. Yes, sir. Uh, let's look at the rest of verse number 11. Then they turned against Moses and complained, Why did you bring us out here to die? In the wilderness. Yeah. Uh, were there not enough graves in Egypt? Why did you make us leave? Uh, what they were saying is, look what you've done to us. When we're afraid, we begin to accuse others. Uh, we begin to accuse ourselves. Uh, we pass the buck. Uh, we blame other people. We run from responsibility. Fear make us run from responsibility. Why am I in this situation? Why am I going through what I'm going through? Why do I find myself back in this situation again? Fear make us run from responsibility. Uh, another thing that fear does, fear makes us stubborn. You ever seen somebody that was stubborn? I know a few, I ain't gonna call no names. Uh, uh, we resist change when we become afraid. In verse number 12, they said, didn't we tell you to leave us in Egypt? In other words, they were saying to Moses, don't rock the boat. Don't accept the status quo. Yes, we always done it this way before. And you need to understand that fear keeps people from growing. Yes, sir. Uh, fear keeps businesses from growing. Uh, Fear keeps churches from growing uh, because it causes us to become stubborn. God is ready to set them free from 400 years of slavery and the Israelite says, leave us alone. Another thing that fear does is makes us Short sighted. It makes us short sighted. Uh, 
when the Israelites were confronted with the Red Sea, they said in verse number 12, the B clause, our Egyptian slavery was better than dying out here in the wilderness. How can you say that? After 400 years of slavery, uh, they wanted to go back uh, to the good old days in Egypt. Bondage. Is that really the good old days? Uh, they wanted to return. They wanted to retreat. They wanted to go back. They had so little faith that God will come through for them and grant them the freedom that he called for. They preferred to return to bondage in Egypt. And that's what's happening in our world right now because of the pandemic. Instead of people turning to God with their whole heart, they rather stay in what's common. Stay in uh, uh, what they know about, what they sure about. Instead of taking a walk on faith and say, God, direct my path to somewhere new. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to admit that when this pandemic first hit, I was afraid. Uh, to be honest, I was very afraid. Uh, I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from. I didn't know how we, how we was going to be able to sustain in such a tragic time. But one day, while sitting in the office down there, uh, the Lord had to direct my attention to our track record. Right. Uh, sometimes you have to go back and you have to begin to remember what the Lord has already done yes, for you. Yes, 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 yes. There you go. There you go. Already done. He reminded me that when you was in the satellite hotel, How you all have to work from the sweat of your brow. They had to set up, take down. People would try to find the church. They would end up three floors, four floors up. Uh, people would complain, we can't find y'all in the satellite hotel. He said, I told you that I was going to move you before the first Sunday of the new year. Uh, I began to go and look for a building. You all know that story. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Yep. I tried to help the Lord out. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, because I didn't want the word of the Lord <laughs> to fall to the ground. But how many know that when the word of the Lord tells you something, yeah. when God is behind uh, what he said, you don't have to worry. Yeah, yeah. I ain't ready yet. I'm just, I'm still in our teaching mode. Uh, he said, uh, uh, go here. I remember the first building we went to, uh, it didn't work out. I misheard the voice of the Lord. Why? Because time was winding up. But it wasn't until uh, that Christmas morning, I got a call on Christmas morning uh, about the building. 2217 East Platte. Yes, sir. Uh, we had to rush in there, clean the building. I remember just as plain today, my, my son-in-law and my, 
my brother-in-law was down there cleaning dirty yellow chair when he got out of the storage. And God was telling me through this message, he said that uh, you shouldn't have to wrestle in fear. In other words, Bell, your faith should be strengthened because what I already done for you. Uh, we worship that 2217. Then the landlord started acting up. Uh, we picked the place up. It was a beautiful house of worship. Uh, we would come in and catch the landlord poking around through the field and he would break in. And so we had to start looking for another building. Yes, sir. I began to walk in fear again. <laughs> and the Lord said, did I bring you out before? Yes, sir. Yes. Did I bring you out to leave you? I remember we started looking at different buildings. I remember one building we looked at, it was a bar. I said, we're just going to change the spirit of the place. That? And the Lord said, that's not what I have for you. Uh, I, we stumbled over there on the 3075 building eight. Uh, they directed us to a couple churches that we can share space with and they all turned us down y'all listen I'm trying to challenge you uh, we knew that all of them needed help but they turned us down but the Lord said uh, he said I cause all things to work for you they took us down to the end building building and said can you use this I use this. They put us in the big warehouse. Uh, things went good for about eight months. Uh, some of them know the history, and we were outside one day after after doing something, and somebody walked up and said, uh, "Did they talk to y'all yet?" I said, "Talk to us about what?" They turned this place into a storage. I said, well, where the church going to go? <laughs> I said, they just can't do this. He said, he said, well, they got space over here that they want you all to move into. Uh, we went over to look at the space. Uh, the space couldn't hold for about 20 people. <laughs> uh, I, 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 said, uh, I said, come on, y'all. I said, we got to go, and we got to talk. We went to the building owners. So I'm, I'm telling you, when, when when your faith is challenged in difficult times, you have to go back to what God already done in your life. Everybody in here got some kind of testimony. Everybody in here got some kind of story where, where you can look back and see what the Lord has already brought you through. It can be something as simple as a sickness. It can be something as simple as a car accident yeah, 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 yeah. that he allowed you to walk away from. Yeah. But sometimes uh, we have to depend on what we've already been through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walked up in that office. Hey, Pastor Bell, come on in and sit down. Yes, yeah, it's me. He said, what can I do for you? He said, I said, man, I said, no. I didn't know the church had to move. Nobody told me. I said, we went to look at the building that you all made available to us. I said, but you can't take me out the match, out of the warehouse and put me in a matchbox. I told him just like that. Did I not match? I said, you can't take me out the warehouse and put me in a matchbox. He said, well, he said, well what you want to do? I said, what are y'all doing with the building across the way? He said, you still want that building? I said, yeah, I want that building. <laughs> he said, well, how soon can you get out that building? I said, give me the key. <laughs> my, my, my problem with the children of Israel is that if he fed you in the desert,
if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. Come on. You ever seen a mustard seed? If you hold a mustard seed in your hand, you barely can see it. He said, you don't have to have much. He said, well, all you got to do is have the faith washer. The size of a mustard seed. He said that you can say to the mountain, be thou removed. And I wonder today how many people is walking in the faith the size of a mustard seed. Yes. Uh, uh, my faith now after the pandemic yeah, made me stronger. There's nothing nobody can tell me about God. Why? Because I've seen God move in difficult times. Yes, yes. I've seen God sustain us uh -huh. when others were closing their doors. Uh, I, I've seen God make a way out of no way. Yes, uh, I've seen God open doors. Uh, I, I've seen God heal my marriage. Uh, I'm not telling nobody nothing that I ain't been through. Come on. But what I'm trying to get you to realize that when you have your confidence in God, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. all things, my Lord. all things are possible. Oh. <laughs> but it's your level of faith. I said, God, how do I get people to get excited and to activate faith? He said, you got to teach. Teach? I teach? I begin to think that teaching is going to require more time. The Lord said, I gave you time. <laughs> yes, sir. He said, when I closed the door, I gave you time. <laughs> he said, I gave you time to adjust. That's what he said to us today. I gave you time to reconsider some stuff. I gave you time to realize what was important, not to you. But what was important to me? I said, God, what are you saying to me? He said, my people are perishing yeah, 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 yeah. for the lack of knowledge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They don't understand that fear is killing them. My God. They don't understand that fear is stopping them from moving forward. Uh, fear is stopping them uh, from helping to advance the kingdom of God. So how can I uh, replace fear with faith? How do I or how do you take risks in faith rather than caving to fear. How do I take the risk? My wife used to say he lived close to the edge. And she was right. Uh, I'm in my best thinking when I'm right here close to the edge. I'm in, I'm in my best state of mind when time is against me. Yeah. And sometimes in God, uh, we have to take a risk for God. Yes, if he's saying that I, I, I'll make a way out of no way, you got to trust him enough to make a way out of no way. Yeah. That's right. He told Mo, he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, he said, look out. He said, as far as your eyes can see. Yes, sir. He said, that's how blessed you are.
you're going to be. He said, your seed is going to be blessed. He said, everything that's connected to you is going to be blessed. And you need to understand that there is no failure in you because you are connected. Yes, sir. This is a prophetic house. You might have to go through some things, but you will survive. Yes, sir. You might have some ups. You might have some downs, but you will survive. You might have to recover on some ends. But tell somebody, you will survive. You will survive. Uh, oh, because one thing I know about God is that God always comes through. Yes. 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 Uh, the old folks used to say like this, he may not come when you want him, uh -huh. but he's always on time. In other words, uh, it might be in the ninth hour. Yes, sir. It might be in the tenth hour. Yeah, yeah. It might be in the eleventh hour. Mm -hmm. But one thing I know mm -hmm. is that God is coming through for me. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I thought about the songwriter David said. He said, I never seen the righteous. Forsaken in them, nor his seed beg bread. Yeah. David said, All the days of my appointed time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. said, I'm going to wait on the Lord. And I learned from it none of that waiting time yeah. is not wasting time. Yes, yes, what I have to do while I'm waiting, yes, I have to strengthen my faith. Yes, sir. What I got to do while I'm waiting, yeah. I got to lift my hands in the midst of this pandemic yes, and say, Father, I stretch yes. my hands to thee. Yes. No other help I know. Yes. Father, I'm down uh, on my knees yes. asking you to help me yes. in my time of distress. Yes.
He wants us to depend totally on him. Yes, sir. I question nothing God tells me now. Because I've seen him do it. God did not bring us this far. God did not bring your family this far to let the enemy win. Whatever his will is for your life is going to come to pass. We have to stay in the vein. Yes, this pandemic is rough. I hear people complaining. Oh, we can't do nothing, but I see them everywhere. They talk about the pandemic, but ain't nobody staying home. Ain't nobody stop spending money. Seems like the money is making it everywhere but to the church house. I see more successful people in the time of a pandemic. Look at what he already done. We got to build our faith. God calls us uh, to have to go through storms in difficult times to see where your heart is. You want to see where a person's heart is? Let some difficult times hit them. Let difficult times come that way. We have been challenged as a church. I've been challenged as a man, as a father, as a husband. But in difficult times, I stood on the word of God. I said, if I lose it all, it don't change the fact that God is still good. Amen. You got to feed your faith and starve your fear to death. What are you reading? What are you listening to? What do your diet consist of? I go to sleep with my headphones on. I'm listening to the word of God. Yeah. I wake up, I'm driving. I'm listening to the word of God. Whether through song or whether through word. Yeah. You got to feed your spirit in these difficult times. And we have to stop letting our situations dictate our outcome. If you want it, fight for it. If God promises it to you, fight for it. Break up my marriage. Shoot. I paid a price for that. My fight was mine. My fight was mine. Yeah. Even if it's her, she's going to stay with me whether she wants to or not. Ain't that right? Say it. <laughs> I got too much invested. Yes, sir. But more than that, y'all, I got sense enough to know that she's part of my vision. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. So right. See? So right. You, you, you got to know the value. I know the value. Yes, sir. She makes me. Come on. I believe God is gracious to me because of her. Right. Oh, I ain't going to 
don't let nobody walk up and take my good thing. Do we have struggles? Yes. What marriage don't? You got to know what the word of the Lord is saying. Somebody have to stop talking. And somebody got to be listening to the voice of the Lord. What I learned to do, what trouble have taught me is in difficult times. I learned to be quiet. I learned to shut my mouth. Did you learn to shut your mouth? Yes. Redonna said she learned to shut her mouth. When we surrender and we get quiet, that gives God room and space to deal with our heart. A lot of times, y'all, hear me. A lot of times, it be the fight in us that will cause us to lose everything. In this pandemic, you don't have to lose nothing. But you got to have the ability to hear God. No, it don't always look good. No, it don't always feel good. But I trust God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He has proven himself to me in more ways than one. And that's what we got to go back to doing, Redonna. Teaching faith. We got to teach faith. When it looks like they want to hear it, when it looks like they don't want to hear it, we got to teach faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence of things not seen. I see myself farther along in my future because I have the faith to believe that God's going to do what he said he's going to do in my life. The Bible says to repent and do your first works over. Remember, in my exhortation, I said that God desired revival in the real church. We are the real church. You, your person, you are the church. Yes. And when the church becomes honest with the creator, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and the church can say, God, I'm a sinner. That's simple. I'm in need of the Savior's love. He said he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You can't save your family until he saved you. You can't save your children until he saved you. Give God your heart. The new church, it, it's just different, y'all. Look at it. This is the church. We have to teach the word of God with boldness. We have to teach the word of God, no matter who it offends, with conviction. Yes, Lord. Because he said, heaven and earth are pass away, but my word yes, sir. shall stand forever. Oh, yeah. My word is without compromise. Right. Yes, no matter what your skin color is, my word yes, sir. is without compromise. 
I said what I meant. And I meant what I said. Without holiness, no man, no woman, no boy, no girl shall see the Lord. And you tried it your way. Ain't you ready to do it God's way? If you're ready and you're here in this sanctuary, you're ready to do it God's way, I invite you to come. It has to be something better than this. Why am I suffering so much anguish, so much pain? God, I want to be better. I want to do better. But I'm afraid. You don't have to be afraid. All you do is give him the church. And that's what the enemy tried to do, Carl. He tried to take the church. That's what he wants. The church. If he can get the church, he can destroy the church. But the word of God said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We need the church back, y'all. Yes, sir. We need to let our selfish agenda go. And we need to turn back to the Lord. When we turn back to the Lord, when we allow him to take his place in our life, then we will see him operate. He can't operate outside of his word. He just wants the church back. He just wants the church back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He just wants the church back. He just want the church back. Y'all just concentrate on me for a minute. Y'all give me a give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late.
my situation. It's me. Fix my problem. Fix me, oh Lord. Fix me, oh Lord. Fix me, oh Lord. I'm available. I'm available to you. My story.
say I die, victory is that portion. Victory is my portion. Get up every day you get up. Once you come back to that your mouth, victory is my portion. Victory is my portion. Victory is my portion. Victory is my portion. Victory is my portion.
we ask you to give up your time, and we're going to feed you well. Well, not only are you going to get natural food, but you're going to get spiritual food. Our, our babies, when they come, they're going to eat. And then when our young adults and our teenagers come, they can eat. And then every fourth Saturday, we're going to have that movie time, Gary. So we need to get our young people involved. Pastor's going to be here. We're going to pop popcorn. We're going to have a good time. But listen, we got to minister to the whole body of Christ. And the, the, the other change is everything connected to this ministry got to be connected to some kind of teaching mechanism. So all of our musicians, all of our praise team members, you got to be in one of them teaching sessions. Y'all choose which one y'all want to be in, but you got to be in one of them. Listen, we cannot serve and sing the praises of God if we don't understand the word of God. And I'm not saying that y'all don't understand the word of God, but we need to be ever learning. Do I got a witness in the house? But the word says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You got to hear the word of God. You got to feed yourself the word of God. And that is what's going to strengthen your faith. That's the only way your faith can be strengthened. You got to eat and digest the word of God. So please, for those that need to get the hard copy, we have them. Uh, get those and please make yourself available. Uh, definitely get uh, talk, but that's starting in November. But we want to provide food. Uh, uh, listen, ministers and elders. Uh, listen, this, this this year, the Lord showed me through the pandemic, ain't no more sitting down. So some of these classes you are going to have to conduct. Uh, we, we have a, I have the material already. Uh, uh, everything is already set and we're ready to go. And so we're going to build the people of God through the Word of God. Yeah, I need you. That's our job. Q, I need you. KJ, I need you. The other Mac, I need you. Deacon, I need you. I need you. We got to teach the people the word of God. How can they hear without a preacher? Y'all hear me? So we left God. Honey, am I missing anything else? Y'all pray for me as she prepared to take me to dinner.